Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry for the delay. Um, some technical difficulties and some emotional difficulties as well. Uh, thank you, um, Su Hark, Su Jeremiah, and Mrs. V. Thank you to uh, the worship team. We are blessed. And uh, we praise God for that. We are truly blessed. On behalf of uh, Jen, Dom, and Gia, we thank you for being with us tonight to celebrate the homecoming of God. God is now permanently home. Actually, today is a double celebration. Besides God homecoming, uh, I'm also celebrating with Jen our 19th anniversary of being together. And uh, I praise God for that as well. I praise God for Jen. She is, she is a blessing to me. And I praise God for his faithfulness to us. I would like to welcome everyone to tonight's celebration. Let me first introduce myself. My name is Chris Gamboa. God was used to know, was used to be known as my son, but it seems like the tables have turned. I now have to be introduced as his father. And I'm so proud of him. And I thank God for the goodness that he has shown God. I'd like to take this time to thank both the Gamboa, the Gamboa and the Hui families, to both our parents, all our siblings, all, and all our extended family who've always stood alongside God. Thank you so much. I also want to proclaim the testimony of God's church in our coming together. This is truly the testimony of the church, that we come alongside each other to edify, to equip, to build, to support, to love one another. Many of you have journeyed with us for so many months. Many of you I don't even personally know. In this journey, I have found an old friend whom I haven't been in touch for years, who travailed with us. I've also found a new friend that seemed like I've known him for so many years because of their love for God, it's that like of their own child, and of whom I still have yet to meet face to face. A lot of you took many tasks outside of your schedule just to serve us in various ways. God is truly amazing in all this. My family is truly indebted for all your love for God and nothing that we can ever repay. And so may the God who knows everything be the one to repay you a thousandfold on our account. For 10 months, our hearts are always filled with your encouragement. If there was a prayer container in heaven, then it will always be overflowing with prayers for us. Our refrigerators, are always full of the food that you send. My bank account, the balance today has still not been reduced since. Thank you so much for blessing us. I praise God. Today, I'm also I'm taking this opportunity to give back the blessings through sharing God's word to you. And I pray that God's spirit will remove every obstacle that hinders you from receiving his blessing today. I pray that your faith will be quickened as you hear God's word. But before I do, let me first introduce uh, Sidewalk Sunday School. So we have been supporting this uh, ministry for a number of years now. Sidewalk Sunday School is actually a traveling Sunday school run and uh, managed, well, run by kids of ages 9 to 16. So kids teaching other kids. They teach the national anthem. They teach worship through singing. And they teach also God's word. You know, at the end of the 20-minute 20, 20 program, the kids at the end of that program will receive a Rabisco biscuit. And I'd like to take this time to thank Norik for, of Rabisco for supporting this ministry as well. On a given weekend, Saturday and Sunday combined, they would cover around 1,000 kids. So they move from one street to another. And, uh, you know, 20-minute program and, that, and that's it. So around 1,000 kids for one weekend. But uh, let me show you how it actually works. I'm 
mga tulad nila ay napapapilak sa aria. Marinig niyo ba ang sinabi ni Jesus? Nung pagkakataon na yun, merong humadlang sa bata at ito ang alagad. Inaakala ng alagad na hindi siya pwedeng lumapit ni Jesus. Subalit, kapag pagsabi ni Jesus na lumapit ang bata, ito ay kanyang ginawa. Lumapit na siya kay Jesus at hindi siya nakipilan ng alagad. Ganto rin sa ating buhay. Ini maaaring iniisip mo na ikaw bata pa at ikaw ay makasalanan. Kaya naman, wala kang pagkakataon na kung saan ay lumapit sa ating Panginoon. Pero tandaan mo, mahal ka ng Diyos at tayos lang mapalapit sa inyo. Maaaring kang lumapit sa ating Panginoon. First Peter 1.23 says, Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. Friends, what the ministry is doing is planting imperishable seeds. In other translation, it says incorruptible seeds into the lives of these children. And like a tree, it will take decades before a seed can fully grow. So we expect a good return of our investment on the gospel seeds that have been planted. I praise God for the faithfulness of the workers of this ministry. Atenena, the head of ministry, I believe, is here with us tonight. And uh, again, to all, this, uh, to all those who partnered with us uh, to support this ministry, I thank you. And I promise you a good return. Zero-sum game. I'm not sure if you have heard that term. In game theory and economic theory, a zero-sum game is a mathematical representation of a situation in which an advantage is won by one of two sides is lost by the other. If the total gains of a participant are added up and the total losses are subtracted, they will sum to zero. In simple terms, the gain of one is the loss of the other. Hence, if you total the gains from a macro level, it will result to zero. To illustrate, let's say we have a cake and we all have equally contributed to bake that cake. If I take a bigger portion of that cake more than you do, then it will give me a profit, and that will translate to a loss for you. But if we tally my profit against your loss, it will just be zero. In other words, there was no gain from the total perspective because we did not grow or increase the cake. Hence, the perspective, that perspective there was no gain in baking and in the distribution of that cake. For almost two years now, we all have been, in one way or another, directly or indirectly affected by the pandemic. Be it health issues, financial or economic issues, emotional or mental issues, and even relational issues, the disruption that the pandemic has created is unprecedented, making all our previous gains turn to losses. I thought about this zero-sum game from a point of view of time, where we have been investing or taking profits from our history past all for it to be lost in the present time. Hence, if we make a sum of our earnings in life, it all goes back to zero. You know, I did consider this paradigm when we found out about God's health condition, that no matter what investment you make in providing for his health, serving the best food, giving him good education, putting him under a sh uh, safe shelter, that it should bring about a profitable return of a long, satisfying life. But today, it only was reduced to zero. Is it the right worldview to consider? God's word in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 11 to 12 says, Again, I saw that under the sun, the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor the bread to the wise, nor riches to the intelligent, nor favor to, the, to those with knowledge but time and chance happen to, to, to them all. For a man does not know his time, like fish that are taken in an evil net, and like birds that are caught in a snare, so the children of man are snared at an evil time, when it suddenly falls upon them. Lately, someone close to me asked me, why is there suffering? And I think you agree with me that the past year and a half has been full of suffering. So she did a quick search in the internet and found a reply that says, there is suffering and pain in life for us to be near to our God and for us to test our faith and for us to know God through Jesus. 
I'm sorry to say that this person does not know what the, what the God of the Bible has to say about suffering. It is not my intention tonight to discuss this topic. But let me quickly answer that question according to what God, God has to say in his word. First, there is suffering because sin is in the world. Creation is disrupted from the intended function and purpose that God created it to be. We humans were all created in God's image, which includes our ability to have free will and make our own choices. Unfortunately, the first man and woman chose to disobey God. And the rest of history has been a reiterative cycle of going to that same path. In Romans 3.23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In Ecclesiastes 7.20, it says, Indeed, there is no one on earth who is righteous, no one who does what is right and never sins. And sin leads to death. The cause of death is sin. In other words, the cause of suffering is sin. Romans 6.23 says, Sin pays off with death, with death. But God's gift is eternal life, given by Jesus Christ, our Lord. Ecclesiastes 7.2b says, For death is the destiny of everyone, and the living should take this to heart. To those who know Job, he faced suffering at one time in his life. And he concluded in Job 1.21, he said, I came naked from my mother's womb, and I will be naked when I leave. The Lord gave me what I had, and the Lord has taken away. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Let me just say that this statement is Job's opinion. And I praise God that after that, what he went through in his life, losing his entire family, losing his livelihood, losing even his health, he would still say, praise the name of God. But I disagree that the Lord takes away. Jesus said it this way. In John 10.10, 10, it says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I, or Jesus, came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Family and friends, Jesus is not the one giving us suffering so that we can go back to find him. Our God is not angry at us. The God that created you is not hard and unloving towards you. In fact, in Romans 5.8, it says, But God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He loved you even when you don't love him back. He gave his only son. He actually gave everything for us, even when we did not reciprocate. He loves you. He is not the one causing our suffering. But the right question tonight that I wanted to give an answer to is not the question of why. It's not the question of why there is suffering. But how do we respond to suffering? I know that this sounds so academic, but I have to face this question with urgency. As you see, I did not prepare for my family to be in suffering. I did not prepare for sickness. I did not prepare for physical death. And the truth is, I did not even prepare for an, for an occasion such as this. If suffering is inevitable, how do we respond? I've asked Jesus this question so many times. But if you know Jesus, he likes to answer a question with another question. And so after I asked him, how do we go through this? He answered me with, who are you? Now, that doesn't sound like the right answer to a how question. More so to be able to answer my question. And so as I sought the answer in God's word, I began to uncover the answer to the question as to who I am in Christ. First, who I am in Christ is a new creation. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 5, 16a and 17, From now on, therefore, we, re we regard no one according to the flesh. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Paul explains that there is a new being for those who are in Christ. In other words, if you have placed your faith in Jesus, if you believe that he loves you, died and resurrected from death for you, then you are a new being. Jesus said this in John 3.3, 3, Truly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That is why we are called born-again Christians. Because we are now a new man, with our spirit is born of Christ. And Paul further writes in Corinthians 4.16-18, Therefore do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. 
for, for momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. In other words, the essence of our living is based on what we don't see. There is a natural world and there is a spiritual world. While our natural person is decaying every day, our spiritual person is alive till eternity in Christ. That's why we always say we live by faith and not by sight. We don't live by what we see, but by the faith according to every word of God. You know, God understood this well. He understands that the Holy Spirit indwells him and that God speaks through him, through God's word and his gentle whispers. To my fellow parents, don't discount that God, through the Holy Spirit, speaks to, your, to our children. I believe he speaks to, to me. To him. I believe the Holy Spirit speaks to me differently. He speaks to Jen differently, to Dom, and, even, and yes, even to Gia. Through the months, God has confirmed with me that he hears from God regularly. One time, I spoke to God about baptism, as to what it means, as to why the need as to why the need to be baptized. And he replied with a quick, I don't know. I thought that being a child, he wouldn't understand or take it seriously. One day, he wanted to be baptized. And I knew speaking to the Lord, he was speaking to the Lord about it. And so he did. Praise God, he was baptized on Resurrection Sunday this year. As a believer of Christ, know that you are a new creation. You have the Spirit of God in you and is one with your spirit. Second, who I am in Christ is, I am, is that I am a child of God. In Romans 8, 15, Paul writes, So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. If you belong to Christ, you are not treated as a slave. You are not treated as a servant. You are not a second-class citizen. You are family. You are a son of the, of the Most High God, of whom we call him Papa. You know, as a son, I don't see myself as a slave of my papa. Though I serve him, I work for him, I obey him, those are out of my love for him. And as, as his son, what he has, I have. I eat from his house, I use his car, and I use some of his things. I have an owner's authority based on my relationship with my papa. And that is how God relates to me as his child. I have authority of every matter that he has entrusted to me through Christ. You know, God knows his standing as a child of God. He understands how his heavenly father loves him. On the night before he went home to be with the Lord, we moved him to a private room from the ICU where he stayed for a week. I know that he misses us very much being alone for a week. I was actually expecting that he would stay up all night talking or watching TV with me. Instead, after feeding him dinner, he closed his eyes as if he is going to sleep. And I told him, why are you going to sleep? We just got together. And he replied me with, I'm praying. I never expected that answer. And that made me realize how he was able to cope being alone for a week in the ICU. All those time he was with his heavenly papa. Jesus said, in my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you myself. That where, I'm, that where I am, you may be also. John 14, 2. In 1 Corinthians 15, 35 to 49. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? You foolish person, what 
what you saw does not come from life unless it dies. And what you saw is not a body that it is to, that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps a wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its, its own body. For not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is of, is one, is of one kind, and the glory of the earthly is of another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For stars differ from the star in glory. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in, in a natural body. And it is raised in a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man became a living being. And the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural, and then the spiritual. The first man was from earth, and man from dust, and the second man is from heaven. And as was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of heaven. Church, this is our hope, that one day we go home to be with our Father in our spiritual bodies. You know, I was the primary caregiver of Gab, and I was the one who always accompanied him in many vis the many visits and stays that he had in the hospital. Those many days are so precious to me. We had the most meaningful conversations. We talked about life, about family, about dreams, and Yes, also about death. You know, Gab has only one concern of death, and that is he will miss us. He knows where he's headed to, and he has no doubt about going to his permanent home. And I thank God that the Holy Spirit has revealed this truth to him. You know, concerning life and death as a believer of Jesus, the worst case scenario is to remain here on earth. There is no better place to be than in God's presence. And I heard the story that there are two kids by the name of Noah who were praying for God, who gave the same response after hearing that God already passed. They both exclaimed, God is already with Jesus. Such great truth coming from the mouth of the babes. As a believer, a follower of Christ, you are a son of God. We are identified as his children. And we know that our permanent home is where Jesus is. We will be with him and the Father for all eternity. Third, and my last point, who I am in Christ is that I am blessed with every spiritual blessing. In Ephesians 1.3, it says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. This passage could not be more clear when it says that we have every spiritual blessing. You know, there's nothing more for God to give. And what are these spiritual blessings? In Galatians 5, 22, 23, reminds us of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. That says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. These fruits are already deposited in us as believers. However, probably we have not renewed our mind enough to make these fruits manifest in our natural bodies. You know, due to God's physical condition, we are also concerned about his mental and emotional health. We want to understand how he thinks, how he feels, if he's discouraged or if he's in any way in, in, a, in emotional pain. And we testify, I testify, that he manifests the power and the fruits of the Holy Spirit in him during all these times. When I consider what, I had, what he had to go through and put myself in his shoes, I would doubt myself about if I will be able to do as he did. 
And as, it's, as it is said in Philippians 4.13, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. I know God said that we can do all things, but sometimes I feel the word all seems to be so big. So what I do to remind myself that if God did it, so can I. You know, there's nothing normal about being joyful or having peace, bearing pain, exhibiting kindness and goodness in God's situation. But God, but, but through God's spirit that lives in us, God can, and we can too. As a believer, a follower of Christ, you are blessed with every spiritual blessings. We have supernatural abilities in us through the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. I started with the question of how do I go through suffering? And the answer I received was that who I am in Christ. I am a believer, so I guess my job is to believe God's word. And if God's word says I am a new creation, I'm a child of God, I'm blessed with every spiritual blessings, and I am, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in me are one, then I will believe I am supernatural. And this means that I can overcome suffering because of what Jesus has done on the cross. In 1 John 16, 33, it says, These things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Jesus saying this, I have overcome the world. To my fellow believers, no matter what situation you are in, if you are experiencing discouragement, despair, physical sickness, or pain, hopelessness, the loss of a loved one, or whatever tribulation that is, I want to remind you that we are able to overcome. The natural response to any suffering is to be in self-pity, to have an emotional release, to complain, to be discouraged, or even to give up. But you are supernatural. You have the power of the Spirit of God living inside you. You only need to choose to believe and walk in the Spirit, and not, and not according to what your flesh feels. I want to encourage you that you are able to do all things, no matter how difficult it may seem. It is through Christ. Early in our journey, we have received God's peace in our hearts, destroying every fear, for fear is not from God. We have hope in all things, no matter what the situation looks like, and even up to now. And we have the joy of the Lord, even when we feel emotional pain. We choose to let the joy of the Lord overcome the demands of our flesh. And I do hope that you understand how blessed we are, truly are in Christ, and that you make this decision of walking in the Spirit today. All glory to God. I know that there are some of us here who have yet to receive Jesus in their lives. Perhaps you grew up from a culture or religion that is not Jesus. What I preach today is not about culture or religion. Culture is a tradition of our parents and ancestors. And religion is about what we should do so that we can attain the blessings of God. That is not Jesus Christ. Jesus is outside culture and religion. Jesus is about loving you for who you are without you needing to bring or do anything for him. He is the son of God who left the heavenly places to come to his creation and reunite us with him. I would like to give you this opportunity to receive this love today. Perhaps you have heard this invitation and hesitated before. You may still have reservations today. All I ask is that you give it a try to taste the goodness and kindness and the love of Jesus. When I had to bring God to the emergency room before he was admitted to the ICU, I was praying in the spirit while we were waiting for the results of the lab works. And you know, a great temptation came upon me. A thought went into my head that says, is this a Jesus that you serve? He allowed your son to be in this condition? Leave him. And as I even considered, as, as I start considering that thought, God's word just flooded my being. Romans 8.37 says, 
No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Family and friends, Jesus loves us, and his love will not separate from us. Today, today I invite you to take this opportunity to be, a bo- to be born in a, new, in, a, in a new creation, to be a child of God, and to receive from, his, from him every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. If you hear Jesus speaking to you today, please do not resist him. I want to pray for you. Can we all come to the Lord in prayer? As we close our eyes, I want to extend that invitation. If you want to receive Jesus today, I I want to ask you to pray with me aloud, wherever you are. God's word says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Pray aloud that the faith you have in your heart be confirmed. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving me. That even when I am a sinner, you love me and gave your life for me. Today, I turn away from my sins and put my faith in you as my God, my master, and my savior. Thank you for creating a new man in me and giving me eternal life. From today, I will follow you. I ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer tonight, I welcome you to God's family. Please, please send me a message. I want not only to celebrate with you, but I also want to help you grow in your faith in Christ. God bless you. Let me close with his final words from the book of Ecclesiastes. And may this give us wisdom in moving forward, trusting God, and take take our responsibility living a God-glorifying life. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. It says, However wise, rich, and powerful a person may be, no one has power over when death comes. Life leads to death. That's it. We never know when our lives will end. People do not know when their hour will come. God alone knows everything. In comparison to him, our wisdom and knowledge is very limited. Ultimately, we are in God's hands. We should enjoy life and make the most of our time here. Seize life. God takes pleasure in your pleasure. Relish life with a spouse you love each and every day of your precarious life. Each day is is a gift from God. Make the most of each one. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Don't waste your life. Make the most of every moment and every opportunity. Family and friends, again, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you all for your love. God bless us all. And Gab, I hope you're having a fun time, an awesome time there with Jesus. See you again.